Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I am going to discuss about a very important thing in Rails and that is difference between delete and destroy. So, and this question is very important from the interview perspective, whether you are a junior developer or you are an experienced developer, uh, this question is very great to check your knowledge about the active record queries and delete uh, how to delete uh, active record model instance and so this is very important for every rails developer no matter whether it is uh, is junior or experienced rails developer so we first need to know that both delete and destroy are used to delete single or multiple records or active record model instances from the database but there are few differences as well between delete and destroy so let's take a look on the differences the first difference is that delete does not instantiate the object but destroy does it means that whenever you want to uh, re uh, remove an instance from uh, active record instance from the database and you use delete then it simply deletes the that record or that active record model instance but it does not instantiate uh, that record before deleting that okay so what it does that delete method just take an id argument and delete the records without instantiating this it simply returns the number of rows that is deleted for example if you delete multiple rows uh, then it will uh, return that how many rows has been deleted or affected into the database and if you delete a single icon, then it will return that only one row affected. Okay. And this delete method is more efficient than destroy because it does not instantiate the record and does not execute any callbacks or filter. But the destroy method, on the other hand, the destroy method instantiate the record first and then delete it. So it executes callbacks, filters, on object to be deleted and hence it is less efficient than delete method and both delete and destroy can delete single or multiple records at once okay for deleting a single record it just take an id argument or the id of the model object and for deleting multiple records or multiple objects it takes a array of ids or array of primary keys of the records that to be deleted so let's uh, look at this and try to understand that here i'm showing you that practically that i have a dummy project here and just to uh, illustrate that how delete and destroy works so you can see that i have two active record models that is a project and another one is a sprint okay and uh, the project has many sprints and it has some validation as well and the sprint belongs to project and it has few delete callbacks like uh, the callbacks which uh, has to be invoked when object is going to be deleted like before and after okay so now let's try to delete an sprint object let's find the sprint equal to sprint dot first so it will return the first of first sprint object and now when you run you will see that when you invoke sprint dot destroy it will first execute the before destroy callback then it deletes the record and then it execute the after destroy callback and then it will return the object that has been deleted so what it had does that it has uh, uh, performed the callbacks first before destroy callback first and then uh, remove the object from the database then executed the after destroy callback and then returns the object that has been deleted from the database so this is what we can uh, achieve with the destroy method now let's call the simple thing with the delete so now when you call sprint.delete you will simply see 
that uh, the record has been deleted from the database and delete query is uh, performed here now the thing is you are seeing a delete query here why because uh, you have run you have first faced the sprint and then returns uh, then execute the delete query on it now when you do something like this into delete 3 then you will see that no object will be returned only the delete query will be fired so this is the difference uh, between delete this is the first difference between delete and destroy that uh, whenever you remove an object or remove an object from the database using delete method it will directly run the query and return the number of rows that has been affected so here when here we call delete method and it uh, returns only one and here we call destroy method and what it returns that uh, it has first executed the callbacks instantiate the object then after destroy callbacks and then return the object that has been deleted now we you can just call simply like this destroy on object with id 4 you will still see that even i don't uh, uh, fetch the object first then it will also returning me the object so here it is clear that delete just returns the number of rows or number of objects that has been deleted and destroy performs the callbacks filters instantiate the objects and then delete the record and then return the object that has been deleted okay now let's try so here so far we have seen that how we can uh, delete records single records okay like using del both delete and destroy we can remove single records now let's try to remove multiple records at once so as i explained earlier that uh, to delete multiple records you need to pass an id of uh, sorry an array of primary keys or ids of the model instances okay so sprint dot delete let's find a uh, let's pass here like uh, okay so here i'm passing uh five six seven eight nine ten okay and now so you will see that it has performed a single delete query and the number of objects that has been deleted and now do the same thing with destroy method Let's remove it. Pass ID is like 11, 12, 13, 15, and 16, and 17. Now, let's hit enter. Okay. So now you can see here that every time it instantiate each object separately, then uh, delete that particular instance and then return that object. So and you can see that uh, here you have received an array of uh, objects that has been deleted so that's why i call that delete is more efficient than destroy why because destroy makes your query simple here you can see that it when you pass array of ids that needs to be deleted from the database then it just run a single query don't no callbacks executed and no object instantiation there but with destroy there is a lot of time okay so now let's switch to the another difference the another difference is that delete does not execute callbacks but destroy does so we have already seen that uh, that uh, we seen it already actually that delete does not instantiate the object to be called hence it does not execute any callbacks or filter but since destroy instant instantiate the object first before deleting it so it execute all callbacks associated with that object that you are trying to delete one more thing that delete all is faster than 
destroy all this is the same thing just we just uh, saw right now that uh, while passing delete all is for deleting all the records okay and destroy all is uh, for destroying all the records that uh, are existing in the database for that particular model instance so we have already seen that whenever we uh, try to delete multiple records from the database uh, delete only returns the delete all the same thing the delete all method only returns the number of uh, objects that has been deleted and the de destroy all do the same thing that we saw in uh, multiple delete destroy action that uh, first it will instantiate all the objects and then it will start deleting them so hence this is very time taking so delete all is faster than destroy all okay now the delete will not work with dependent option so what does it mean now let me show you so here you can see in the project method that uh, i have has many sprints okay now if i use it like uh, as many sprints and then destroy so i hope all of you or all of the rails uh, uh, developers who have ever performed this uh, has many association might have idea about this dependent destroy that uh, what this dependent destroy does that whenever you uh, delete a parent object it will destroy all the dependent children object from for that particular record so you cannot use it like dependent delete okay now you have used dependent delete and let me show you the example let's reload the console now if you delete project dot first dot destroy and then you will see that the dependent option must be one of either destroy delete all nullify restrict with error restrict with exception and destroy async but is delete so you cannot pass delete as an option for dependent destroy method you can pass like a destroy that we mostly used to use that let's reload the console okay here we have deleted the project first now if you you can use delete all as well let's reload the control console first So what it had does that it first deleted all the sprints where the project ID is to and then it deletes the project. Okay. So this is the difference between this is the fourth number of difference between delete and destroy. So and there are many things that you can uh, pass like uh, like you can pass a where query as well and then perform destroy all or delete all there and you can pass uh, array for deleting multiple array of ids for deleting multiple attributes or you can pass some scopes as well so let's uh, try to uh, pro call it with some where condition that i am going for the sprint called method here sprint dot count let's see how many sprint records we have because we have deleted so many sprints so far okay so we still have the 80 sprints so far now sprint dot where id greater than let's say 40 and you will see to maybe 20 sprints yeah 
okay so we got uh, 61 experience so far now you can perform it like oh let's make it uh, 80 21 so now you can perform delete all on it as well delete all so you can see that we have performed delete all on a uh, method which is uh, returning a uh, fetching record using where query similarly you can do the same thing with uh, let's say you can see now 40 records are there now you can perform the same query with destroy all but now you can see that uh, again <laughs> every record has been instantiated first and then deleted first and th there are some associated callbacks which are executed uh, like uh, before destroy after destroy so uh, this is the thing and this is the main difference between uh, delete and destroy so i hope everything is clear about now uh, what are the major differences between delete and destroy in rails and there are obviously different circumstances and you can see some different outputs as well but it depends upon how much practice you do with that and uh, i'm definitely sure that you will get uh, try if you try this in more detail at your end then you will definitely get some more uh, better results and more better explanation towards the things okay so that's it for this lecture and let's meet in the next lecture with uh, another important question and till then tata bye bye goodbye yeah by the way i would just like to uh you guys that if you find this content is really fine then please uh, don't hesitate to subscribe or share this uh, video okay so thanks for watching again and let's meet in the next lecture